Okay, Jen, welcome back to our book club. We are reading Viola Davis's Finding Me, and we've read from chapters five to 15. So we're starting at five, and I've taken some notes, and you've taken some notes. But the first thing I want to bring up with you is you were right. Viola Davis admitted that she was wetting herself because of the rats in the apartment. So you got that right. There you go. What can I say? Got that it? Is, yeah. That's real poverty it's just, there. It's just awful. Um, the thought of it, I don't even like seeing mice in the house, no. <laughs> let alone rats yeah. in the apartment. So imagine, um, you know, your home is meant to be your haven. Yeah. And you've got these rodents basically taking over your haven. Yes. Uh, and the noises I can imagine. And it's not like a rat. It's like rats. So it's so in chapter five, there is a family that move in the Thompsons and they've got eight kids and these two women that she described have their teeth over their top lip. Hold on. So there's the bottom two. So do I like that? The two women. And she called them the bullfrogs because they had big glasses. And she also said the children were kidnapped. I couldn't believe that. Um, be- that was quite shocking, actually. Yeah. At first when I read it, I thought it was a joke, but then it's like, no, they really were. Yeah, right near the end, um, they were kidnapped. And I just think it's just sad because they were using these kids to claim money. Yep. Um, they were using these kids um, to, to, well, they made the kids become bullies. Mm-hmm. They were abused. Yeah. physically and sexually yeah and these two women weren't even related to these children they were taken away from their families yeah yeah and it, one of the little girls her name was Lisa not and not like me and she <laughs> and she <laughs> she was you know calling out to the kids and she I think she yelled out, you bald-headed black bitch to the mother when the mother stood up for her kids, when Viola's mother stood up to them. And I think that's when she went and slapped that child. She did. She was, you know, I think there was only so much you can take when your children are being bullied by a gang of eight children, let alone living in the state of poverty they're in, but then this family and these kids bringing even more trauma to her children. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I get it. And back in those days, you know, they used to be, I'm sure, you know, other parents used to hit other kids and things like that. It was just this hitting thing. But yeah. yes, something that um, would happen. Yeah. And uh, But I think she lost it. Yeah. You know, and I absolutely. suppose that's the only thing that her mum can do, because look at yeah. of the living conditions. There was no yeah. control in the money coming in, the way that they were living. Yeah. But for the bullying, that's the only situation that she could actually control and try and sort out, basically. Yeah. And what I found happy. Yeah, but what I found interesting, when they pressed charges against her mum, she said, Viola said that her parents held a united front. That's when they came together and they were working together to protect their children. And I, and it's interesting because when they were in front of authority, the father took the passive person he was more passive and she was and the mother was the dominating one you know the way she was going off in the courtroom and all that sort of stuff she was just being real she was just being honest yeah but I think again you've got to look at the situation how were black men treated back yeah. then you yeah. know the, the black woman might be eased up a little bit more so he knew because obviously he said listen to me at the beginning he prep talked her and said yes. listen to me you know you know listen to what the judge say says don't interrupt he did all this he goes you know I know this I've, I've experienced this just do what I tell you but she just didn't she was just being her real self she was being yeah. a mother who, who wanted who was protecting her children and yeah. she wanted the judge to know this is why I did this yeah 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 but it was interesting because the judge sort of said you're not allowed to you know you do know it's against the law not to hit other children so I suppose at that time it was all right to hit your own children you know um but you know that was one of the things that was highlighted how things have changed so much now but he just sort of 
not allowed to hit other people's yes, children. No, but I, I think I'm sure in my Italian family it's happened, you know, cousins playing up at other aunties' houses and everything. You'd get a smack on your bum or whatever. It is. It's, 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 it's happened. <laughs> it, it does, and I think it happens in many cultures regardless. You know, I yeah. think with everybody, you know, slapping or, you know, hitting with a yeah. slipper was yes. subtle or a belt. It was just, yeah. Yeah, punishment. Yeah. They used to do it back in the days, Victorian times at school with with the kids. Yeah, you know, get yeah. the cane. Absolutely. Terrible. Yeah. But yes. Yeah, and that father, he the things he keeps on his bedside table to protect that family, a pitchfork, a machete, an axe. That is not a way to live. Look at where they're living. Yeah. You know, they're meant to be safe in their home. But where they're living, they're not safe. Hmm. So I can kind of understand why he's got those things. And hmm. again, it stems from way, way back, you know, um, that you would have that as protection. Yeah. Unlike now, if you can afford it, or if you can get one, well, legal or illegal, it's guns in America, yeah. you know, but the protection back then would have been the machete and the pitchfork and uh yeah. you know I mean I don't know why he's got a pitchfork in when they, don't they live in the city or something so he <laughs> might have, you know take it yeah but you, uh, I didn't, you know did he do any gardening no I don't know. I don't but, know. um again it, you know that was the weapon that was the only thing as it being you know the man of the house yeah that if anyone came he's protecting his family yeah and that's um, the only thing that he can offer his family is is man strength yeah. and protection yeah. With weapons. Yeah, true. And she says that her brother John was never around. No. So we don't hear much about him until later on. That's but, right. uh, yeah, I've been wondering where he is. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about him in a second. But there was a quote from chapter five that um, I wanted to read to you. And it says, There is an emotional abandonment that comes with poverty and being black the weight of generational trauma and having to fight for your basic needs doesn't leave room for anything else. You just believe that you're the leftovers. So when you're fighting for your basic needs, for a safe home, for food on the table, for clean, for warm water, you, you, you're not, you, there's no more room there really to be dreaming about a career and to be thinking about, you know, doing things that, it's it's like a privilege I feel like it's a privilege for so many of us it is um I just find it so hard to be honest with you it's so hard because like I said she's only two years older than me so we're growing up in the same era and our lives are so different yes you know a black black child growing up in England where you know the racism is very undercover but just the abuse, because those eight kids were abused. Mm. And so they know, you know, so everybody's sort of fighting an existence. And imagine how their self-esteem and their morale. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, I mean, it's, it's just, it's just really hard. Her self-esteem really was hard. so bad that she actually wrote, I was born bad. It's like, no child is yes, born Yes, and that's bad. really sad. I did, I did have that in my notes, actually. That was one of the things about being born, born bad. And I just think it's so sad. Um, but then I suppose a lot of the kids felt that way because, you know, they will look at, you know, we always look at the other person, the other family. And no matter how much you have, you always look at somebody that's doing even better than you. Yeah. So imagine how it must be for her being at the bottom of the barrel, yeah. you know. And um, even with those eight kids, there was a point where they disappeared, didn't they? And then they would come back in the car with money. Yeah. So again, it's like, even though these kids were at the bottom of the barrel, they still had more than what Viola and her family had. Yeah. It's quite heart-wrenching, really. Because, you know, for, when you're a child, that's meant to be the happiest times of your life. That's when you've got no worries about, yeah. you know, what it's like to be in adulthood, no bills, no, you know, nothing like that. This is yeah. when you're meant to be growing and learning to yeah. help prepare you for when you become an adult. And to have to fight and live like that at such a young age, you know, you're meant to be playing and having fun. 
and yeah. oblivious to the things that are going on in the world. And she said she she really really wanted a role model. She didn't see any. There wasn't a lot to look up to at this stage, apart from her sisters. You know, that's right. Because one of her sisters sort of said something as well. Yeah, because she felt that she was a demon and that she was not good. Um, but what she always recalled, just just sort of like, what do you want to be when you grow up? That kind of, I can't remember yeah. that, I'm trying to find it. But it was like, and not, you know, those were the sort of words that she held on to. That's a normal um, thing that a lot of people ask a child. Yeah. Whereas in her world, that's probably like, yeah. oh my God, I've never thought about getting out of here. And I think it was a, a sort of way of encouragement to know that your future doesn't have to be like this. Yeah. Like, you know, it, it doesn't. And that's one yeah. of the things she held on to. I think that was in chapter four, actually. In chapter four. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. It it's from Diane. Yeah. What do you want to be? Chapter yes. four. And, I, and that's those words. Those, those are the only words of strength that um, I would what say right now. Yeah. But, Viola has ever experienced as a child because she didn't get that from her her parents or her family or anybody or her teachers her or anyone yeah 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 she said in in chapter four she said still in the midst of the life shitstorm there was one teeny tiny light a guide a whisper a voice and you can just imagine a massive ocean of a shitstorm and there's this tiny little light on a boat good. saying, please, I just need to hold this light up. I need to keep it lit to get through this shit storm. To be honest with you, I had um, a life death experience and um, somebody said to me, um, and I really was glad that for some, when I was in hospital, I got a text um, and I sort of said, this is, you know, I was able to have the energy to say something to this particular person. And she just said to me, just look for the green light. Just look for that green light. And so when I was in, like I said, a near death situation, I kept looking for that green light. So many different colors came, but eventually I found that green light. Yeah. Here. Doing yeah, podcast. exactly. So I understand that feeling of that little light. Yeah. You know, that little light of survival or wanting to still be on this earth. It's yeah. very that got me, I have to say. That was very touching because I I I'd experienced it myself. Yeah. Chapter six, my calling. Now, the start of this chapter, she finally sees somebody on TV that you know that is full of white people she finally sees somebody miss cicely tyson in yes. the autobiography of miss jane Pittman, and she said i saw an exit i saw a way out she saw someone with a career on television how exciting that's good because definitely not in the uk we kind of had that to be honest with you so yeah. um you know you know america always ahead when it comes to acting films actors whatever yeah they're always a step ahead when you see more people of color on there but yes it must have been so enlightening for her to see someone yeah. like her because again me growing up on tv just even in adverts I never saw anyone like me but even so, in films having a black character was never considered no, and if there was and if there was a black character this is, this is right back right back but it was a white man painted and playing a typical, like a, a Jim Croak or a slave kind of character. Nothing. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 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 Yeah. It yes. Wasn't, there wasn't a story that was about them and their no, journey. No, we were, it was always in the background. If, if it was, a, if they were representing, like I used to watch a lot of the cowboy and Indians, as they would call it, or Westerns when I was younger. So I grew up watching all of those old black and white movies. Absolutely loved them. Um, but that's all you, you know, could yeah. watch. But, you know, again, in some of the movies, some really big movies, they will, you know, colour the face. Oh, well, we, we would know, call that, them that the token, couldn't it? And then by black the 80s and by the by the 80s and 90s, it was like the token black person. You know, yes. you would have a group. So it's ticking that box again. There's the token black person. It's always, the, it's always ticking the box. Yeah. But you know, of all the people to see, Cicely Tyson, I think it must have been um 
really an interesting because I actually I did actually read the Cicely Tyson autobiography as well oh did you so yes 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 so you know I can imagine how she felt it's nice to see somebody that represents you especially in a creative because you know that's a hard thing you know if it was to go and be a cleaner or a cook you know you you know that, that you know you anyone you know you would get that but to aspire to be an actor Mm. as a black woman and you're not seeing anyone like you you know that your journey is going to be a tough one yeah yeah exactly well it inspired them so much that the girls you know got together and they did a a skit down in the local show or whatever it was um and after their winning skit even though she, she it's like Viola couldn't allow herself to enjoy, enjoy the moment too much at all because behind all of that as soon as that curtain went down all she's thinking about is is my father going to kill my mother one day yeah it's that fair because it's like again as a child it's meant to be happy la 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 you know happy yeah. go lucky skipping along yeah. la 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 and you're just skipping along yeah but for her she's too scared to hold on to that happiness because she knows what she's got to face because she's got all those fears of you know her father beating his her mother knowing what state of mind her father's going to be in with the alcoholism you know being you know just all of those things so because you see more of the bad than you see of the good yeah and also if you if you enjoy something too much and you show that joy you it's like you've got further to fall or more to lose you know yes Yes, you're just scared to enjoy it too much because you, you just, the, the, the hurt and yeah. the upset and the sadness. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I wrote down here, you know, children carry so much of their home life, you know, with them. And, and as teachers, we see that. We, you know, we're more aware of it now. And you can pick that child that you, you can, you know, and that you're like, they, hardly smile they're always coming in tired or you pick up on some of those cues that you go this is something at home you know when it's something at home definitely and I just think because you know I don't know if we've you know I don't know if we've gone past the chapter or whatever but there was a point where um what chapter was it where um I might be going ahead of myself but the one of the teacher that um Viola mentions yeah Yeah. you know she knew what the the, the family were going through and she did the best that she could yeah but now as as, us both being teachers it's really good like you said we are able to pick out find out know Hmm. and we will investigate yeah every child needs to be heard and seen and I you know for me I don't know I suppose was there no love? What, what was teaching? Te- was teaching different back then? I suppose it wasn't a way because it was just about learning, but it wasn't. I don't think teaching covered not even what? maybe in my time the emotional side of things. Not at all because it's so different now. Teaching, but it, we're involved. Do you, in do you remember much the teacher going around to the desks and doing group work? They we didn't do that. No, they didn't do that. No, the just teacher was at the front. front. Oh. And yes. everybody did the same thing and everybody yes. was treated the same as no far as academics. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. there was no getting so, to know your kids on a different level. Exactly. It you didn't, was, um, kids didn't speak out in class. Well, I all did. <laughs> but, well, you she know. did. Well, she did, yeah. you know, and but there was a point where um, I don't know what section it was, but, you know, the point where she was at school and she wanted to go to the toilet. Are we, yeah. are we there yet? I don't know, but we can talk about it. That was just awful. You know, so, you know, you've got your hands up. You've got your hands up and that teacher ignores you. And she's got her hand up because she wants to go to the toilet. And the teacher just ignored her. And so she ends up wetting herself. I mean, how bad is that? But then, you know, imagine that. They left, they left. And as this is why I was like, she goes, my piss isn't even good enough for the janitor to clean. Yeah, you know, it was still there the next day. It's how embarrassing it's. I mean, how embarrassing is yeah. that? Yeah, you know, and and she, on top of everything, yeah. you know, yeah, school was meant to be your haven, which it was for them. Yeah, they absolutely. had warmth, they had food. I'm assuming they had. Pack, I don't know how it worked back there because they usually tend to yeah. pack lunches, but you know, they had warmth at least. 
Yes. And that's where you're meant to feel safe. There were no rats, you know, yeah. um, but at the same time you're in a classroom and you want to use a toilet and you're being ignored. Yeah. And, and people wouldn't drink out from the bubbler, the, the water tap after her. And then, you know, she made a comment, you know, at one stage, and I don't know what chapter it is, but at one stage, the school, her house was burning across the street yeah. from the school you know, and people going, is that your place? Is that your place? And then another time people are crowding around when her mother got beaten up and Viola said, our problems became everyone else's entertainment. Yes. Awful. So Awful. it's not even like reaching out to support them. It's no. just like, hey, you know, like you said, entertainment. Oh, did you hear fun. about the, the Davises? Oh, that gossip. And so yeah. imagine just going into school. So you can't even detach yourself. That's the thing, because, you know, sometimes you can be what you know, your home life at home, but then you can go into school and you can yeah. pretend you're a different person altogether. Nobody knows your trials. and yeah. They don't know any of yeah. those things. But, but because of Viola, Viola not being, you know, there, there was no running water, there was no heating, you know. Smelling. Well, you know, bedwetting. Um, she couldn't get away from it from school, you know, you, yeah. you know. In, back in the days I know you know we would call it's not appropriate now but we had names for kids that were like that and when I mm. think back now I can recall yeah a couple of kids that were subdued they could have been abused mm. I can recall you know someone smelling of pee all the time yeah you know yeah. what brought that on but we used to call them names yeah I remember the names that we used to call them yeah yeah and again you know, I have, I think from being a teacher, when I started working as a teacher and seeing some of the kids that had struggles and, you know, home life. Yeah. It, that's when it put me back to when I was in primary school. And I can, like I said, I can even see a couple of the girls um, and boys that were poss possibly going through abuse or yeah. neglect. Yeah. Um, but yeah. you're sometimes, but you're oblivious to it. Yeah. because my life was a happy life yeah and you and as a child you don't even imagine things like that going on if no. you're not exposed to that no because you think what's going on in your household is the same in everybody else's household exactly exactly and it's interesting because you know when uh I, later on in one of the chapters when her mum is bleeding in the chemist in the drugstore mm -hmm. and she's looking to her mom to know what to say in front of the police and in front of people so and she said and she says do we do I have do I have to tell our dirty secret yes so she's carrying this dirty secret of violence and filth with her everywhere and that to her that's a dirty secret imagine it that's so heavy for a child so heavy it's like she, she's done so well Far out. she's done so well she's yeah. done she is a fighter you know she knew what she wanted for and she strives for it because she knew she didn't want to be in the situation that she was in when she was a child mm. she was a fighter Absolutely. she is a fighter yeah because yeah. and she says that her sisters were her platoon so yeah. they were like the soldiers arm in arm looking yes, after each they other. They were very close, defended each other. They were there for each other. Sometimes that's when it's nice to have a big family. Yes. You know, having more than one, you know, not being yeah. an only child. At least you've got each other to support each other, uplift each other. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. I think that's, that, that's, the, that's the positive, really. And that's, yeah. I suppose, what she's held on to, you know, her, her family, her sisters. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's that's what gets you through sometimes. If she, if, yes. because how could she have made friends, really? Exactly. In her situation, exactly. Exactly. no one wants to be friends with the stinky kid. No, but you know, her and her sister have, have all got the same. They're going through the same thing, so they they they're feeling it, they're hearing it, they're smelling it, they're understanding it. So they're in the same situation where they can support each other and uplift each other the best way that they can. And I think through that, it was the relationship that they built with each other. Yeah. I can't recall them so far. I can't recall her saying that they 
had fights and arguments with each other. I don't Not know really. if anything like that. I, I so think... their bond was strong. The yeah. fighting was always between the father and the mother. And that's that's where I re really related to it. So um, I'm, I'm up to chapter seven now where, you know, the mum and dad are fighting and my parents, you know, they should have divorced a lot earlier than they actually did. And whenever they fought, me and my brothers and my sister would go into a room together to get away from them. And I would entertain them or talk about things. And I remember clearly a conversation. I reckon I would have been about, gosh, maybe 10 or something. And, uh, and, they're, and they're all younger than me, apart from my sister Tanya with Down syndrome. And uh, one of them asked me, if mum and dad split up, who do we live with? And I said, it doesn't matter which one we live with as long as we stay together. And my brothers and I, we didn't really argue growing up either because we had that bond. And what's interesting, she says here that, um, that they'd play imaginary games while their parents were fighting. And it, she said it became transcendent. So she, she could leave her body while playing imaginary games and acting, leave her reality and then she gets to be in another world while they're while that's happening and yes. that, that is such a protective thing to do and I think that's what naturally everybody does you know yeah. they put themselves in this cocoon and they just imagine that they're somewhere else I mean these days it. kids just put their headphones on and yes exactly yeah just go and play on their games their gadgets yeah, and... yeah. but like it's any better really but yes you know it must be really hard because yeah, it's, it's it's their coping mechanism. We all, yeah, yeah have it. Yeah, but it's how to use in our in the situations that we're in. So, I want to talk about sex abuse for a second. Yeah. So, in at the end of chapter seven, Viola talks about a man who offered her twenty five cents for a kiss. Now she was completely. She gave him the twenty five cents and kissed him like that, and. You know, and she's the one who felt ashamed of herself for doing it. Um, but then she says she told her mum recently about her brother penetrating two of her sisters and touching Viola and one of the other sisters. Obviously, she does not have a relationship. Her with brother, brother was it her brother's friends? Was it her brother's friends? Or was it I her thought brother? It was her brother. But oh. then it could be the brother. I might need to listen to that again because. Maybe that's the brother John, is it? Maybe that's why he's not there. It, it the... can be one of the reasons. But what I was going to yeah. say to you, it, it, it's more common than you think. You know, when yeah. older brothers or older stepbrothers, uh, yeah. they're testing out their sexual whatever on their younger sisters. It is very common, you know, for a 12-year-old boy or a 13 year old boy or whatever it is. I mean, I don't know how old they were at the time, but um, yeah, she told her mum only recently. Oh, recently, yeah. And, but for her to tell her mum, um, yeah, it was her brother. It's, yeah. yeah. Uh, the mum's reaction wasn't maybe what she expected it to no. be, if I remember rightly. Yeah, yeah. Um, but imagine hearing that about your son. And, and her son uh, sounds like he's not done so great in life because she, no, his, it doesn't he's not even so. raising his own children now, fast because, forward yeah. into that. So, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it just, it's very, yeah, that, that really upset me and surprised me. But also, um, you know, there was another scene of sexual abuse when there was a, they were in a shop and this man was feeling up the young girls in the shop. Yes. And so, and the mother went in to report it and he said, oh, don't worry, like, oh, he does that to don't worry girls. About it. Does that to I everyone. I mean, what, that again, and you look at now when, you know, women go to report rape, it's still a very one of those cases that's very, you know, the rape victim is often but not men supported. have been forgiven for such a long time. And, oh, yeah. that's the way men are. And, you know, we've got that certain is. cultures and religions that are like, well, you can't dress a certain way because men might find you attractive. They that's the thing. Themselves. They always put it down to how you dress. And, and, and I'm sure, to be honest with you, a lot of this took place 
when kids weren't protect, protected and adults knew the kids that were vulnerable or knew the kids that were living in poverty that would use money to got, you know, convince yeah. them to do something. Yeah. When you think about it, you know, um, I remember like, it, it's, it's funny because you like, I remember we, we, we used to, back in the days, I don't think it happens very often now, um, but there, there was this, like, when we used to go to school, when I was in secondary school, there, there was a man who used to, he used to be a, they used to call it the flasher. Yeah. So they used to be these old men, yes. <laughs> and they'll be a certain place, and they'll just flash themselves, and you see their bits, yeah. you know. But us growing up, I remember there was one there in my secondary school, but we were kind of like, ah, just put it away, you know, yeah, you're yeah. disgusting. And we're like, ah, you know, yeah. and sort of make jokes, oh, look how tiny it is, you know, and then we'd yeah. run. Yeah. But then there is always a vulnerable child. Yeah. There's always someone that's vulnerable. Yeah. And they know they can get them. Yeah. You yeah. know, look how open our schools were as well. You know, anyone could walk in. Anyone can come in into our playgrounds. You know, anyone could do anything. They can just, you know, well, I know back, you know, it's a bit different now. But again, the kids weren't really protected from the outside world because yeah. I suppose everyone so trusting yeah and it's um, a fine line as teachers or whether how much you can say to a child like I was I was on yard duty not long ago and there's these two little boys and they would have been maybe six or seven years old the pair of them and they were playing in front of the sign near the road and where the fence is and it's just a little tiny fence and then it's the public right and they were sort of behind bushes and I went all the way over to the other side of the grass area and I said I need you to come away from there you're too yeah. close to, to it and they're like but we're okay da, da, da. and I said no I said yeah. people can come past and and I, and I had to really choose my words right really how to say it. because you again I don't don't scare them you. but at the same time it's like people steal children <laughs> Exactly. And you don't know what parents are saying to them to sort of for them to protect themselves from those that are no good. Yeah. You know, if you understand what I mean, because everyone has, you know, parents have their pet talks about the safety and out there and people, but it might be at different stages and different ages or not at all. So yeah. like you said, as a teacher, you're sort of saying you don't want to scare them because you want them to be independent and go out there and, you know, be independent yeah. travelers. But at the same time, it's like you've got to warn them and it's like how yeah. worth it. Well, I, I was teaching in a town of maybe 2,000 people. Wow. So they probably have never had to think about safety. No. You know, a lot of people still keep their front doors unlocked. Wow. Yeah. Yes. It's, wow, so, it's a different world. It is. Yeah. They wear, they're way behind. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, Andrew and I moved to Warrnambool and he still locks our house, our front door, like we're still living in Melbourne. I'm like, it's okay. <laughs> you don't yeah, have to lock I, it I, every I, time. I don't blame him. I would yeah. still do it because you say yeah. it's okay, but there's still always, you know, nothing's changed with people and people that are bad. Yeah. And do, I mean, so yeah. even though you might think, okay, you know, people don't lock their doors and there's only 2,000 of them, but you don't know who's the bad ones in those community that it's yeah. all swept under the carpet. Yeah. Still got to be wary of things like that. Yeah. I mean, it's nice because they always talk about the good old days, you know, we have our doors <laughs> open and yeah. you know, we were safe, but there's always going to be a mad person safe? around. Exactly. Were you safe, you know? Yeah. With other circumstances, were you safe? No. Um it's the, the turmoil that you, you know, that Viola has had to go through. And for her to admit that to her mum must have taken so much courage to do that because, you know, she must have thought, should I tell my mum? You know, things are great now, you know, how would, would it make my mum feel more guilty that she wasn't doing her job? But her mum had so much to contest with. Yeah. So much yeah. to contest with. I don't know if I would have by this time in her life no, I would have just left it. Yeah. Personally. I mean, just she's another, older It's another heartbreak. It is. That's what I'm saying. You know, you've, you've moved on. It's like, but then I suppose everybody's different. Yeah. Because, I, you know, it's like, you know, like our parents or, you know, there might be things that your parents might have said to you when you were younger or, they, you know, or you might not, you know, whatever the case yeah. may be. But when they get a certain age, you know, 70s, 80s, you know, they knew not, they weren't any wiser. 
no. you know, to certain things. I'm not saying that, yeah. you know, like the abuse and stuff I couldn't condone, maybe, yeah. you know, but I, I don't know. It's like, it must have been hard for mum because, yeah. you know, she's in her happy moment. And, you know, and the fact that, you know, Viola's written this book and she's been so open about her life and her upbringing. Yeah. You know, how does her mum feel right now? They're, they're living well, you yeah. know, they're being supported by Viola, you know, but like, how does it feel to go back? Because, you know, for me, and because of my circumstances, I look at the past and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at now and the future and the positive, you know, they always say to you, don't hold on to the negatives, because sometimes yeah. with the negatives, it just pushes you down, pushes you down, and you just mm. never get out of it, and you're always blaming, and you're always upset, and you're always yeah. angry, but when you're in a good place, you know, you just move forward, see the light, mm. you know, because sometimes when you're looking, you know, at the past, it can really, yeah. um, you, you sometimes don't move forward, Yeah, but it's a hard one, because it's just, it, it's been emotional, it's been physical, it's a hard one, but maybe that's her way of healing. I wonder you know, if she out. waited, I wonder if she waited to release this after her father passed away. Well, the reason I say that is, I mean, if I wanted to tell my entire truth of my life, I honestly w- would have to wait for certain people to have passed. Yeah. Yes. Because even yes. though I've things that I have that have hurt me, abuse that I have had that has shaped me or you know driven me or made me go a certain way, I they're from mostly from people that I love, mm. unfortunately, and I just I I'll tell my story when they're gone because they hurt me because they were hurting themselves to an extent yeah. and I don't want to hurt them again but then, yeah I mean like me and my dad never got on we would always clash because it was like even though I was quiet but yeah. I was like I was if I had an opinion or I disagreed I would say yeah and to so me and dad we, we, if you're going to star signs we are opposite right yeah. anyway right so we're opposite yeah. stars, so there's going to be a clash and I think for me, it was like he had expectations of me as a girl. So, you know, I've got three yeah. brothers. And it was like any house chore, it'd always be Jenny, and wash the dishes, Jenny. And I used to say, why? It's not fair. You're always yeah, picking on me. That sounds like my house. <laughs> oh my, and I was like, it's not fair. You're always picking on me because I'm the only girl. And what I can understand is like yeah. my dad would wash, he would cook, he would do all these things. I'm thinking, well, why, if you can do it, my brothers can't do it. You know, and years later, I did, you know, confront dad about all sorts of things, you know, yeah. just being very upfront and honest with him. Um, but, you know, I just think it was just that time, you know. Well, he would have um, looked at your brothers as I need to train them to be the breadwinners and I need to train her to yeah, be a good wife. Maybe. But then I still saw that my, you know, if mum was working on this, you know, working on a day, you know, um, he would cook, mm. you know, <laughs> so it's like, well, why can't, but you know, it was all resolved yeah. in the end. So mum yeah. came and said, right, we'll have a washing up list. Yeah. So we had yeah. days where we'd wash up. So yeah. that was resolved. Um, but I think it's again, you know, old school, whatever, whatever. But I did confront dad about that. You know, I said, I always felt people picking on me. Mm. Um, you know, I even remember um, as well, like, you know, all my friends, you know, a few of my friends had boyfriends, you know, 16, 17, 18, and I didn't have a boyfriend. And it was just because of my choice. I wasn't ready yet. Yeah. And I remember I brought somebody home um, when I was 20, going on 21, you know, wanted, and my dad was so rude. He was so rude. And I couldn't understand it because he was fixing cars of my friends who had boyfriends who were the, and, she, and they were the same ages as me. But I think it's just, you know, again, this kind of protect, and I, answer, I can understand, you know, why? Yeah. But I suppose it's just that sort of like, you know, it, he, was, he was like, oh, not until you start working. And I'm thinking, but you and mum and dad, you and mum got married at 23. And not that, yeah. you, you know, no, and yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm at the age, you know. Yeah. So it's just all these little things. And I did speak to dad about that. And I mean, you know, and I think because I was very verbal and he would call it back chatting, but it's like, if I didn't agree, I would yeah. say. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and you know, we we had you know a few things I used to question about his infidelity and everything. 
Hmm. And, you know, he told me the reason why. And I think it was just like a lads thing. He goes, everybody was doing it, um, you know, but my dad was just an open book. You know, he yeah. didn't keep it quiet. But there so. are a lot of, there seems to be a lot of different, like in Italy, for example, it's very common still for men to have a woman on the side. So maybe there are just some cultures where it's, yeah, they still accept that a man you know he's allowed to go and put his dick in whatever he wants exactly you know it's crazy but yeah, yeah. but then I had to know you know my, my daughter says I'm always on the men's side rather than the women's side but then you've got to look at other animals if you look at the, the, the you know the an, other animals they don't stick to the same ones except for a couple of them you know yeah. you know the penguins and the lovebirds they, yeah. they're very you know but everyone it like have a kid here and then they'll go else and have you know they do yeah. mix, mix and mingle so maybe yeah suppressing um being a an natural animal, yeah. suppressing a natural thing of our yeah. you know you know it but at the same time <laughs> it's yeah it hurts regardless yeah. it yeah. hurts it hurts yeah. people it hurts when you you do something that hurts them emotionally yeah. so and that's what you don't want you know at the end of the day you want to live a good life and and respect and support you know the yeah. people that you're with that you're meant to love mm. and that you've, you've um had you know made families with so it's 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 you know despite you know, viola's mum viola's dad stayed with the mum then you know if he's beating her all the time why did he stay but the i question why was he beating her why was he an alcoholic because he had his own demons he hadn't right obviously so what had he, his own thing Right, so, and what are those demons usually for a black man? Mother issues? I don't know. Mother issues? No, really, because the mothers are always there. It could be society and how they're seen. So then having to have power somewhere. I think it's not about the power. I mean, I don't know. It'd be devil's advocate here. But I'm just sort of basing from what I've seen. Because he's an alcoholic. When people are alcoholics, they're for different reasons. But when you're looking at the, you know, he's meant to be the man of the house. And look, look at what they're living in. Look at the yeah. squalor, the yeah. smell, the you know, pain. no electricity, no water, hardly any food, you know. Um, and even though he was working with the horses, I can't understand, again, what, not even hardly a wage. Because that's, a, imagine what you're earning now doing that, you know. Yeah. Um, Maybe he was drowning his sorrows because he was unhappy with himself because he's it brought into this world six children, has a wife, and he can't even put keep have a, a roof over their head where they're dry, they're clean, and everything is functioning, everything is working. Yeah. So I, you know, I'm looking at it that he and then you know he drinks. But, you know, some people, when they drink, I'm teetotal, so I don't know, but I've seen behaviours. Mm. Some people can manage their drink and they're as normal as, as anything. Some people might blurt things out and you're thinking, you know, big secrets. Some people might um, mm. be subdued or fall asleep and some people might be abusive. Yeah. And I think he fall into the category of abuse. Yeah. You know, he came home and he just beat the daylights out of her, you know, because he... He, he was, he's been let down by society mm. and he feels that he's let down his family um, because when he wasn't drinking, he wasn't beating from what I, you know, it always seems to be the alcohol that causes the, the abuse. And I just think, you know, I, I mean, because I know we, he works at the races, but I can't recall if they mentioned any other jobs that he was doing. No. You know, so how long was he doing this job for? So I'm looking at it through that perspective because, you know, she's talking about how many generations from slavery. So you've got to look at where he was at and how close he was to, you know, his forefathers being slaves and, and, and everything like that. Mm. So, you know, even in today's society, um, black men more so, when they step out of their front door, they have to put a shield on. Mm because you might be just walking down the road minding your own business and it happens now 
And then there's a little old white person or whatever, could be any other. And, you know, and they've got this thing about black people mm-hmm. and think that all black men and women, you know, we're it's all scary. criminals and yeah. we all smoke weed and we're all, you yeah. know, far yeah. from. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know, this I know, you know, and, um, but they have to put an armor on. Yeah. In work, you know, like, for example, um, I could be amongst my, you know, people from, you know, where from the country, you know, and we'd have our little chat and we might have our little accents and we put these little things on, whatever. But then when you go into the workplace, you have to be a different person. Yeah. I think for black, you know, white people, I'm just going to just say overall white people, they can just go into work and just be themselves. Mm. You know, I can go into work and have like my hair like this or an Afro and they'll be commenting about it oh, let me touch your hair or, you know, it's like you're not accepted for the hair, what grows out of your head. Hmm. So, you know, you can imagine for the black man, you know, it's, it's always the words that you're, you know, we're always titled with aggressive. We're always, you know, if we're standing hmm. up for ourselves, you know, it's like, oh, we intimidated them yeah. or this. You, know, you always hear those words. Yeah, yeah. So, And it's interesting you know, when she ends up going to Juilliard, which is one of the biggest acting schools or most famous acting schools in the world, when she went there, she, um, and I have to say this to you, she said, everyone was geared to turn you into a perfect white actor. So right. all everything that they were learning, the uh, the speech patterns, how they would have to act, it was all geared towards that. And, exactly. and, you know, and Viola, you know, she was always judged for her looks in getting parts. Now, Viola has a typical wide nose, whereas if you look at people like Halle Berry or someone like that, their nose is very straight. It's a white, whiter looking nose. You know what I mean? More European, as they More call European, it. More European, as they call it. So like mine, I suppose. I mean, mine's big. I'm an Italian, but. You know what I mean? That the that yeah. little nose. So Viola and the big lips. And that, so Viola looked at herself as ugly because yeah. there was this picture of this is what's beautiful, this is what's accepted, you know. And in the TV, and, what you see people acting in plays is, a, you know, even like ballerinas, ballet dancers. Yes. Um, yes. You know, and and it's it's sad. It's really really sad because. You know, what I love, again, about our blackness is we come in so many shapes, so many different shades of brands, as we were saying. Um, yep. Our features are so distinguished. You know, it's, you know, again, it, but it's, I think with what it is with white society, everyone, you know, they've come in, they've taken over in other countries, whether it be India, Africa, all this, and everyone aspires to be in the lighter skinned. You know, yeah. the more European you look, the better you are um, and the better, you know, it's... it's well, people it's, bleach it's their skin. There was a programme on that recently, actually. There was a, a, an Asian, but he had a programme, there was a programme on BBC Two, and it was about skin colouring and bleaching. Yeah. And, you know, he was an Asian guy and he did yeah. it as well. Yeah. Well, a lot of Bollywood people do. Do, do. do you know how many people stopped me when I was living in London thinking I was a particular Bollywood actress? I got oh, mistaken really? for an Indian actress quite ah, a few times. I think and, I know who they, I don't know the name of that. And I think my side profile, especially, I hate my side profile. But it's a side, my side it's profile, side especially, profile. and I was like, oh my gosh, I look Indian as well. See, Jen, this is why I'm telling you, I'm not completely white. And I went to Bunnings, which is the hardware store. And so I'm going to send that video to you of what I recorded of my skin colour. <laughs> okay oh you did yeah. do it I should do it was it. very I hard will... to determine <laughs> what I'll do is I will get one a, a color sheet thing as well because you know we're all you know we're all mixed all of us are mixed yeah well there's a lot I of African be... background in Italy you know you're gonna always find poverty in all different colors and different yeah. cultures and whatever regardless but yes, there's a lot of affluent black people out there, which is great, you know, um, but we have to always work. And Viola has said it. We always have to work double harder or triple harder than the white man. Hmm. I remember Absolutely. growing up, you know, it, when we were growing up um, back in the days, it was like, you know, if you're doing your O-levels, that's what we used to call it back in the days, your O-levels and your exams. You know, if, if the white man's going to get have five and pass five, you've got to pass ten. Yeah, that's the sort of talks yeah. that you would have. 
okay that's the sort of talks that my parents gave me or my mum you know yeah. if this pe- so you always and you will know you'll see this with Viola and what we always have to work harder than the yeah. white man well she calls it the hard. one-two punch she says the invisibility of the one-two punch that is bang you're black that's your first problem bang bang you're poor and I mean a poor white person still has more opportunity than a poor black person oh gosh so she calls that the one-two punch and there's a couple of times she says that's a one-two punch and it's still like that but it's like like I said it's 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 a fight it's not easy you know even me as a teacher yeah you know I see the way that the black teachers work or the black staff work compared to maybe the white staff, you know, and, you know, you see a difference. You see a difference in certain little things. You see a difference. Do you, do um, you feel like you have to work harder to prove yourself? We always do. As, a, as black people, we always do. So, you know, like I said, when you step out that front door, you know, you put on your armour, you might have to, you know, it's like, you know, you have to speak a certain way to be accepted. You have to do your hair in a certain way, mm. um, dress in a certain way. Yeah. But then our counterparts, they just mm. get, you know, it's from, yeah. they, they're just being themselves. Yeah. And I just think it's really, really sad. You know, um, I mean, to be honest with you, I have to say, and um, my workplace, they're excellent. You know, you can have dreadlocks or locks. You can have, you know, the one thing, it's very multicultural in our workplace. And I love it, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, it, they, it ticks all the box, but naturally, I, I'm not going to yeah. lie, to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah. Um, that's the one thing I can say, because I've been to other schools, and you think, oh, wow, you know, wow. But without the school that I was in, um, I have to say they ticked all the boxes, but it wasn't for tick boxing sake. It was just naturally. Well, it's such a diversity, diversity of kids. It has to reflect on the schools, staff. But a lot of us, a lot of schools that have diversity of kids still, there's one yeah. particular all white staff, hmm. especially in management level or teaching level. Yeah. Yeah. Notice that. Yeah. So it doesn't make a difference. Yeah. But, you know, for Viola, um, going back to that, yes, all the scripts, everything... It's just like when I, yeah, you know, when when we did plays and everything like that. Yes, it's true. Everything is based on the white man. You know, it's not. It's like the, the white yeah. performer. This is yeah. the right way. This is the way that it yeah. should be done, and this is the way you should carry yourself. This is the way your yeah. hair should look. Yeah, but just going back to what you said, you know, about uh, the, you know, people have this assumption, and that a black person may not work as hard or be as smart or da 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 do you remember when Viola was in the classroom and they watched a documentary I think it was a documentary about and the the kids turned around and and they said oh slaves were dumb now they slaves couldn't read and write and so a lot of people have carried that and that, that. that would they would right. tell them, they would tell their kids oh yeah they were just dumb anyway they didn't know how to do things da, 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 da. it was illegal to teach a slave to read or write so you know people had to do that underground if they wanted to do that yes and it this is what is annoying because again people always assume and that's what really annoys me as uh, you know a black woman they always assume they always assume that you've got to speak a certain way be a certain way they always assume yeah but I just think you know my generation my, the young generation they need to start you know maybe we you know we do our own thing hmm. you know I you know start your own business and well, this is why you're a part of black woman black women rising Yes, part of Black Women Rising, yes, you know, uh, again, yeah, because of my circumstance, because I've got cancer, and, you know, being a Black woman with kidney cancer, um, when I've gone to the group, I'm I'm the only Black woman, and, uh, you know, it's meant to be a male cancer more than anything else, but I've, I've I've not met a Black woman with kidney cancer, and so I came across Black Women Rising, and it has been my haven. It's been really nice. And it doesn't matter. I mean, I still go to the groups where I'm the only black woman because, you know, we still have got something in common and there's nothing, I don't feel, I don't care who I'm around. It doesn't really matter. I have no qualms about that. 
at all. You know, I'm comfortable anywhere. I could be the only black woman, which mm. tends to happen sometimes. And I think a lot of us have had it or black man, where you're the only one in the company, the only one going on a course. I don't care, you know, and that's how strong we are. Mm. We could be the only one in that needle, that needle in the haystack and we do it. But then when a white person's in that needle of the haystack, different situation, it's quite interesting how uncomfortable they look. Yes. But what I love about Black Women Rising is then you're with people that are like-minded, going through what we're going through. We've even seen a difference as well with diagnosis and how most of the women, how lately, di- how they were, were not taken seriously. So this is still happening. Yes. I mean, it's been in the news recently about, you know, Black women, you know, Blacks with childbirth and everything like that. But on this platform, and, you know, we, we, the, there was a um, survey done so, you know, we, you know, um, the Black Women Rising, they did a survey. And when you look at the statistics and you're thinking 2022, this should not be happening. Mm. So there's still a lot of discrimination. Mm. You know, there is still a lot of discrimination going out there and um, we're not taken seriously. And it is very ingrained. Like you said, you know, um, they think you're not clever. They think, you, you know, they assume mm. that you're going to live in, you know, it doesn't matter where you live. Stop mm-hmm. assuming, get to know me and yeah. ask me first and everyone yeah. else. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, you know, we're not all criminals. We all don't smoke weeds. You know, this, these, all these things they think, you know, that in, and if anything, I, I find it's more of my white friends or people that I know that that smoke weed than my yeah. circle. But, you know, it's just this whole thing. Yeah. Um, and I just think we all need to stop it and we just need to unite all of us. Mm. We're all here for a purpose. You know, and it's so nice that we're all individual and we should all praise how we look individually and whatever disabilities we have or whatever. Hmm. Why are we, you know, why are we still like this? This is what I find so annoying. I've got so many friends from, look, I've got an Australian Italian friend, you know. (laughs) And, you know, and we get on so well, we're so connected because we've got so much in common. And that's yeah. what I think people need to start doing. Stop judging. And I'm you just... and I are so different on so many levels, you know, as far as I'm the naughty one, you're more of the angel <laughs> exactly. and all that sort of stuff. If but... the two of us were together, who would they think would be the naughty one? I don't, yeah, well, I don't know. You sound more posh than me. <laughs> It's got nothing to do with the, it's not got nothing to do with that. Right? You know, we know the wealthy, know. they do all this. I know, you know well, if it, you and I were dressed in the same outfit, same jewellery, same shoes, same everything, and you put us side by side and you asked a group of children, who is the bad lady, who's the good lady, what would you get? Well, it would be me, wouldn't it? It's so sad. Because they, they, they do that now. They, they, I've seen so many other you know, videos, they do that now. It would be yeah. me because the darker you are, and even, you know, black kids, especially in America, I've noticed is it's kind of deep in America. It really, really is. And I can understand why, but, you know, even, you know, there was one I saw recently with this, these black kids and they would choose the white doll rather than the black doll yeah. as being the good and the better. And, 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 yeah. and, you know, and this is what Viola is saying. She's a black woman, she's dark skinned, you know, she's got, you know, her full lips, her beautiful full lips, mm. you know, her lovely shaped nose, her Afro hair or her, whatever textures coming out of her, growing out of her head. But it's like, you know, she's not seen as a, you know, a lead or, or mm. you know, anything significant. Mm. You know, they might give you the job as a, a hooker, you know, and things yeah. like that. Like when I used to watch back in the days or, you know, star skin yeah. hat, you look at Huggy yeah. Bear, and, you yeah. know, he was like, you know, just that typical. Yeah. And it's like, which is fine, you know, it's still good to see a black man, you know, because you still, it's like picking the black and trying to, but it's, um, still goes on today. 